Okay, welcome back everyone to Super Cloud 2 event live here in Palo Alto, the Cube Studios, live stage performance, virtually syndicating it all over the world. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, here as Cube alumni and special influencer guest, Howie Shu, VP of Machine Learning at Zscaler, also part-time as a Cube analyst, because he's that good, comes on all the time. You're basically a Cube analyst as well. Thanks for coming on. Thanks well, for inviting me. Well, you're not really a Cube analyst, but like, you're kind of like a Cube analyst. <laughs> Happy New Year to everyone. <laughs> Great to see you. <laughs> Great to see you, Dave and John. We've been talking about chat GPT online. You wrote a great post about it being more like Amazon, not like Google. More than just Google search. More than Google search. Everyone's, oh, it's going to compete with Google search, which it kind of does a little bit, but more it's infrastructure. So a clever point, good segue into this conversation because this is kind of the beginning of these kinds of next gen things we're going to see. Things where it's like an obvious next gen is getting real. Kind of like seeing the browser for the first time, the mosaic browser. Well, this internet thing's real. I think this is that moment, and super cloud-like enablement is coming. So this has been a big part of the super cloud kind of theme. Yeah, you talk about super cloud, you talk about uh, you know, uh, AI, chat GPT. I really think the chat GPT is really another Netscape moment, the browser moment. Because if you think about internet technology, right, it was brewing for 20 years before early 90s, not until you had a you know, browser, people realize, wow, this is how wonderful this technology could do, right? You know, all the wonderful things. Then you have Yahoo and Amazon. I think we have brewing, you know, the AI technology for, you know, a lot, uh, quite, quite some time, even then, you know, neural networks, deep learning. But not until ChatGPT came along, people realized, wow, you know, the user interface, user experience could be that great, right? So I really think, you know, if you look at the last 30 years, there is a browser moment, there is an iPhone moment. I think ChatGPT moment is yeah. as big as... What do you as see that. as the intersection of things like ChatGPT and the super cloud? Of course, the media is going to focus, journalists are going to focus on all the negatives and the privacy. Okay, we, you know we're going to get by that, right? Always do. Where do you see the super cloud and sort of the distributed data fitting in with ChatGPT? Does it use that as a data source? Does it have to be, you know, what's the link? I think there are a number of use cases. One of the use cases, we talked about why we even had super cloud because of the complexity, because of the you know, heterogeneous nature of different clouds. In order for me as a developer, in order for me to create applications, I have to, so many things to worry about, right? It's a complexity. But with ChatGPT, with the AI, I don't have to worry about it, right? Those kind of details will be taken care of by you know, the underlying layer. So we have been talking about on this show, you know, over the last mm. uh, what, year or so about the super cloud. Hey, defining that you know, API layer, spanning across you know, multiple clouds, I think that will be happening. However, for a lot of these things that will be more hidden, right? A lot of that will be automated by the bots. You know, we sh the, 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 um, you know, we were just talking about it right before the show. Uh, one of the profound statement I heard from Adrian uh, Cockroft about 10 years ago was, hey, Howie, you know, at Netflix, right? You know, IT is just one API call away. That's a profound statement I heard about a decade ago. Mm. I think the next decade, right, you know, the IT is just the one English language away, right? So when it's one English language away, it's no longer as important, API this, API that. You still need API, just like hardware, right? You still need all of those things. Yeah. That's, what, that's going to be more hidden. The, the, the high level thing will be more, you know, English language or the language, right? Any language for, for that matter. And so through language, you'll tap services that live across the super You cloud, just tell you what, you what you want, what you desire, right? You know, the bots will, will help you to figure out what, what the complexity is, right? You know, a lot of the, like you said, a lot of criticism about, hey, chat GPT doesn't do this, doesn't do that. Yeah. But if you think about uh, how to break things down, right? For instance, right, you know, ChatGPT doesn't have Microsoft stock price today, yeah. obviously, right? Okay. However, you can ask a ChatGPT to write a program for you, retrieve the Microsoft <laughs> <laughs> stock price, <laughs> and then just run it, right? Yeah. So, so the thing to it's think about- It's only gonna get better. It's only gonna get better. The thing people, people kind of the unfairly criticize ChatGPT is it doesn't do this, but can you not break down humans' task into smaller things? and uh, get a comp complex things uh, to be done by the chat GPT. I think we are there already, you know, the that time to has me, already. That to me is the real game changer, that the assembly of atomic elements at the top of the stack, whether the interface is voice or some programmatic gesture-based thing, you know, wave your hand or. One of the it, analogy I used in my blog was, you know, each person, each professional now is a quarterback. 
and uh, we suddenly have you know a lot more linebacks or you know any backs uh, <laughs> to work for you, right? Uh, for free even, right? You know, and then that's sort of you should think about it. You are the quarterback of your your day-to-day -day job, right? Your your job okay. is not to do everything manually yourself. You call the play. Yeah. And they execute. Yes. Do your job. Yeah. There's yes. all, all the uh, exactly. All the, all the players are there. All the elves are in the, in, the, in the North Pole making the toys, Dave, as we say. <laughs> the, but but this is the thing. I want to get your point. This this change is going to require a new kind of infrastructure, software relationship, a new kind of operating runtime, a new kind of assembler, new kind of uh, loader, link things. It's very operating systems kind of concepts data intensive right how to process the data how to you know process so gigantic data in parallel right that's actually uh, a tough job right so if you if you think about chat gpt why chat G, why open ai is ahead of the game right you know uh, Google may not want to acknowledge it, right? It's not necessarily do they have, you know, not have enough uh, data scientists, uh, but, but, but uh, the software engineering pieces, you know, behind it, right? To train a model, to actually do all those things in parallel, to do all those things in the cost effective way. So I think, you know, a lot of those are still. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question because we've had this conversation privately, but I want to do it while we're on, on stage here. Where are all the alpha geeks and developers and creators and entrepreneurs going to gravitate to? You know, it's it, in every wave you see it in crypto. All the when crypto went, all the alphas went into crypto. Now I think with ChatGPT, you're going to start to see like, wow, it's that moment. A lot of people are going to, you know, scrum and do startups. Um, CTOs will invent stuff. There's a lot of invention, a lot of computer science and customer requirements to figure out. That's new. Where are the alpha entrepreneurs going to go to? What do you think they're going to gravitate to? If you could point to the next layer to enable this super environment, super app environment, super cloud, because there's a lot to do to enable what you just said. Right. You know, if you think about it, using internet as the analogy, right? You know, in the early 90s, internet came along, browser came along. You had uh, two kind of companies, right? One is Amazon, the other one is um, Walmart.com. And then there were companies like maybe GE or whatnot, right? Really didn't take advantage of internet that much. I think you know, you know, the for entrepreneurs suddenly created the Yahoo, Amazon of the ChatGPT native era. That's what we should be all excited about. But for most of the Fortune 500 companies, your job is to survive in this sort of the big revolution. So you at least need to do your Walmart.com sooner than later, right? <laughs> so not not be like a GE, right? You know, hand waving. Hey, I do a lot of the internet, but you know, when you look back last 20, 30 years, what did they do much with the leveraging? The so you internet? think they're going to jump in? They're going to build service companies or? SaaS tech companies or super Okay, companies. so there are two types of opportunities if, if from that perspective. One is, you know, the uh, the open AI-ish kind of the companies. I think the open AI, the, the game is still open, right? You know, the it's really closed AI today. <laughs> um, and there's there room comp for competition, you mean? There's room for competition, right? You know, you can still spend, you know, uh, 50, 100 million dollar to build something interesting. You know, there are companies like Cohere and then so on and so on. There are a bunch of companies. I think there is that. And then there are companies who is going to leverage those sort of the new AI primitives. I think, you know, we have been talking about AI forever, but finally, finally, it's no longer just cute, but also super useful. I think, you know, that's the, the, the time. And if you have the cloud behind you, what do you make the Amazon do differently? Like, because Amazon Web Services is only going to grow with this. It's not going to get smaller. They're going to get, there's more horsepower to handle, there's more needs. Well, Microsoft already showed what's the future, right? You know, you know, yes, there is a kind of the container, you know, the serverless that will continue to grow. But the future is really not Microsoft, about Microsoft showing the future. Well, showing that you know, <laughs> working with OpenAI, oh, okay. right? Uh, they yeah, actually, LinkedIn. they already, they already said that you know we are going to uh, have ChatGPT service. Ten know, billion dollars, I think. Uh, putting. Ten billion dollar putting and also open up the a open API uh, services, right? You know, that's actually, you know, I actually made a prediction that uh, Microsoft the future hinges on OpenAI. I think you know. They, they believe that that's ten million dollar, ten billion dollar bet. Yeah, ten billion dollar bet. So I want to ask you a question. It's somewhat academic, but it's relevant. Is the, for for a, a number of years, it looked like having first mover advantage wasn't an advantage. PCs, spreadsheets, uh, uh, the browser, right? Uh, social well, media, Microsoft friends had turn, monopoly right? power on that one. Right, uh, mobile. Yeah, you, uh, Apple wasn't first in mobile. But exactly. Then, but 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 that's somewhat changed. The cloud, AWS was first. You could debate whether or not, but, but AWS, okay, they have first mover advantage. Crypto, Bitcoin, first mover advantage. You think 
Do you think open AI will have first mover advantage? It certainly has open. Uh, it has it certainly has its advantage today. I think the. Um, I think it's yet to. I mean, I think uh, the, the game is still out there, right? You know, we're still in the first inning, um, early inning of the game. So I don't think the game is over for the rest of the players, uh, whether the big players or the open AI kind of the um, sort of competitors. So one of the VCs actually asked me the other day, right? Hey, how much money do I need to spend, uh, invest to get a you know, another shop to the open AI sort of the uh, <laughs> level. You know, I did a sound. Line you know, up. That's a classic VC. <laughs> How much is it right cost up. me to replicate well, open AI? I'm pretty sure he asked <laughs> the luck, question, you know, to that. a bunch of guys, right? Yeah, so, good luck with that. So we kind of did a some yeah, napkin. the VC is all What did you come them. up with? A hundred million. A hundred million dollar is the auto magnitude I came up with, right? You know, not a billion, not ten million, right? So a hundred million. Hundreds of millions. A hundred, million. yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred million auto magnitude is what I came up with. You know, we can get into details, you know, in other sort of the time. That's but, actually you know, not that much. If it's you not think about it. exactly. So not a, so. So when he heard of me articulating, why is that? You know, he's thinking, right? You know, he actually, you know, asked me, hey, you know, there's this company. Do you happen to know this company? Can I reach out? You know, all those things. So, so, so I truly believe it's not a billion or yeah. ten billion dollar issue. It's more like. $100. And also, the, the, your other point about the refer referencing the internet revolution is a good comparable. The other thing there is, the online user population was a big driver of the growth of that. So, what's the equivalent here for online user population for AI? Is it more apps, more users? Um, what's your? Is it? Is it? Still, I mean, we're still early on. It's it's, it's first inning. Yeah, we are kind what, of the, you know. What's the key metric for, for success of this sector? Could you, do you have a, a read on that? Uh, I think the, you know, the users is, uh, it, the number of users is a good metrics, but I think it's going to be a lot more. A lot of people are going to use AI services without even knowing they're using it, yeah. right? You know, I think a lot of the applications are being already built on top of open AI. And then they are kind of a, you know get people help people to do marketing legal documents, you know. Um, so they are already inherently open AI kind of the users already. Yeah. So I think uh, yeah. Well, Howie, we've got to wrap, but I really appreciate you coming on. I want to give you the last minute um, to wrap up here. In your experience, and you've seen many waves of innovation. You've been have your hands in a lot of the big waves, the past, past three inflection points, and obviously machine learning you're doing now. You're deep in. Why is this super cloud movement, this wave of super cloud and the discussion of this next inflection point, why is it so important for the folks watching? Why should they be paying attention to this particular moment in time? Could you share your, your, your super clip on, on super cloud? Right, if you think about, so, so this is simple from my point of view. So why do you even have cloud to, to begin with, right? IT is too complex, too complex to operate, too expensive. So there's a newer model, there's a better model, right? Unless someone else operated, there is elasticity out of it, right? That's great. Until you have multiple vendors, right? Many vendors, even, you know, we're talking about kind of a how to make multiple vendors look like the same, but frankly speaking, even one vendor has, you know, thousand services. Now it's kind of a getting uh, what Kid was talking about, what? Uh, cloud chaos, right? So every time you have, you know, it's the, it's the evolution, you know, uh, the, the, the history repeats itself. Right, you know, you have uh, you know next great things and uh, too many great things, and then people need to sort of abstract this out. So, so it's almost that uh, you must uh, do do this. But I think I think how to abstract this out is something that at this time AI is going to help a lot. Right, you know, like I mentioned, right, a lot of the abstraction you don't have to think about API anymore. I bet ten years from now, language, you know, IT is one language away not an API away. So think about that world, right? So super cloud, in, in my opinion, sure, you kind of abstract things out, you have, you know, consistent layers, but who's going to do that? Is that like a, we all agreed upon the model, agreed upon those APIs? Not necessary, there are certain, you know, truth in that, but there are other truths that's just uh, let boss take care of, right? Whether, the, you know, I want some X happens, whether it's going to be done by Azure, by AWS, by GCP, bots will figure out at a given time with certain context, with your security requirement, posture requirement, I'll figure that out. That's awesome. And you know, Dave, you and I have been talking about this. We think scale is the new ratification. If you have first mover advantage, I'll see the benefit, but scale is a huge thing. Open AI, AWS. Yeah, every day we are using 
OpenAI today, we are labeling data for them. So they are, you know, that's a little bit of the first <laughs> advantage, first yeah. move advantage yeah. that other people don't have, right? So it's kind of scary. So I'm very sure that uh, Google is a little bit. <laughs> when we do our super AI event, uh, you're definitely going to be keynoting. I think, you know, we, we're talking about super cloud. You know, before long, we are going to talk about super intelligent cloud. <laughs> that, I'm super excited, <laughs> Howie, about this. Thanks for coming on. Great to see you, Howie Chu. Always a great analyst for us, contributing to the community, VP of machine learning at Zscaler, uh, industry legend and friend of theCUBE. Thanks for coming on and sharing really, really great advice and insight into what this next wave means. This super cloud is the next wave. If you're not on it, you're Driftwood, says Pat Gelsinger. So you're going to see a lot more discussion. We'll be back more here live in Palo Alto after this short break. Thank you.